How much further is it? What does it matter? Just enjoy it. Oh, it's so beautiful here. All right, I have a serious question, Dad. Do you believe in ghosts? Jesse. Your father believes in what he can see and feel. Isn't that narrow-minded? No. It's a scientific training. What about you, Mom? I believe in your father. I haven't worked it out yet. As far from my office as possible. Dad, I don't make that much noise. Where's the case? Behind the house, in the back. Jesse, I don't want you going near those caves by yourself. Mom, I'm not gonna get lost. Jesse, didn't you want to see the inside of the house first? We can have a swimming pool. There's plenty of room. Dad, that'd be so cool. And a basketball court. Yeah. Think he likes it? Goodness. We're here, Megan. Megan. This is our new home. Come on, Dad. Well, now you're going to tell me you miss the city, right? No, never. This is what we need. <laughs> uh, moving trucks here. Let's go, honey. Moving truck. No? OK, you wait here. Say that's it. <laughs> okay, for now. Uh, time out. is so big. I wonder what the Templetons did with it. Oh, I wish you would have seen it furnished. Yeah, well, I say the Templetons never really lived here. They just kind of kept the place. And the old man, well, he wanted to be an architect, so he considered himself an expert on everything. Hmm, sounds like someone I know. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. And they say he worked with Thomas Edison. The old man who hmm. says? Jane, the real estate office. You don't think she's lying, do you? To make a sale? No. Of course not. You're such a cynic. I don't know. I married you, didn't I? So, we're almost unpacked, sweetie. You'll see you'll like it here. School is closed, and I'll be with you all the time now. Wow. 
What do you think? Oh, doesn't look like an old phonograph. What's that? An old record player. What's that? Never mind. Think it's worth anything? Could be. That's what I figured. Ready to plug in? Uh, hold it, hold it. I don't want to burn the house down yet. <laughs> yeah. Wiring seems to be okay. Okay, do it. be continued tomorrow if you go to bed right now well, dad five more minutes well i don't negotiate with terrorists What is it? I don't know. Could be the wind. You know what it is? It is the absence of sound. It's the country that I get used to it. Like your grandma's house in Bavaria. So I've gone over Megan's file, and I'm really glad you chose to bring it to us. I have to tell you, we're very happy to have her in your care, Dr. Hollins. One of the reasons we moved here was to take advantage of your program. I can appreciate that. We've been quite successful with autistic patients, but you do know, of course, that there is no ultimate cure, just development. Well, we're not expecting any miracles. At this point, any progress would mean so much to us. You see, she's never spoken since she was born. Just basic sounds. But she really likes using her hands, painting, finger painting, drawing. And she really loves music. Interesting. It's interesting because one of our doctors has had amazing results with music. You might want to consider getting her a music box if you haven't already done that, have you? No. A simple, repetitive tune. Hmm. Huh. We'll try that. Oh, and I should also tell you that in some cases, we do recommend long-term therapy. Like boarding her here? Mm-hmm. We have dormitory facilities. Oh, we couldn't do that. I understand. I, I just want you to know that it's an option. Okay. Very good, Megan. Maybe you try a shape, like a circle. Listen, what's that? Oh, look what Daddy got. A music box. What a pretty tune. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Can you hear it, Megan? It's music for you. Easy on that. I'd like to finish this manual before you finish off the train. Sorry, Dad, it was an accident. You're not gonna finish the bike first? Your dad is a man of many talents. I can do both. You said nobody reads manuals anyway. 
They still have to be written. Can I have the bike when you're done with it? The company's only paying me to write a manual. We'll see about the bike. But who else would they give it to? I said we'll see. Jesse, can't you find something to do that's less intrusive? Thanks. Why don't you go outside? Mm. Nothing to do around here. There's no kids. I'm sorry to hear that. Jesse. Okay. Okay. record player still on. Oh, yeah, it is. But it's not a record player. What is it? I don't know. You said you'd find out. That's an idea. That little nameplate there, it's all tarnished and dirty. Why don't you take that into the kitchen, find the brass polish, clean it up, see what it says, and maybe there's a clue. OK. <laughs> but later, I'm going out. Sheila! What is it? Come here. Look at this. What is that? They're like snow angels. See? Morning, all. Hiya. <laughs> uh, I don't mean to break in on you. <laughs> Name's Gifford, George Gifford. Live uh, just down the hill. Hi. Hi. Victor Robinson. Oh, Victor, hi. And this is my wife, Sheila. Sheila. And my son, Jesse. Hey, Jesse. How you doing? <laughs> and my daughter, Megan. And Megan. Well, it's good to meet you. You know, it's real nice to have children around here again. It's been too quiet. Are you out for a walk? The fact is, I'm so used to your house here being empty that I uh, took to cutting across your land. I hope you don't mind. No, not at all. You know where the caves are? I sure do, son, but you want to be real careful down there. Unless you know your way around, you could get real lost. See? That's what we've been telling him. Well, what have we here? Snow angels. <laughs> they just appeared overnight. Probably just pranksters. Or maybe Mrs. Templeton's on the prowl again. Who? Yeah, old man Templeton. You know, he, uh, he built this place. He was kind of into your uh, spiritual sort of thing. In fact, he spent the last 20 years of his life trying to commune with his late wife. Wow. <laughs> like a ghost? No, nah, not really, son. Just the fancy of a lonely old man. Sure did work at it, though. In fact, I do believe that's why his son Jack never lived here. Well, it's too bad it's a fine house. Yes, it is. It's a beautiful house. Hey, now, don't let me go putting thoughts into your head. It's just a lot of nonsense, you hear? Yeah. Now, you're really going to enjoy it here. Oh, best let Graham Schofield know about this. Any vandals around here, you want to dip in the bud? Graham. Schofield. Insurance? Law enforcement. Oh. Yeah, he's our sheriff. Well, I guess I'd uh, better get going. <laughs> right. Hey, Jesse. Pa. <laughs> There's a 
there's two of them. Why'd one ghost make two angels? Edison himself was into spiritualism. A lot of otherwise educated men were at the time, like Houdini and Arthur Conan Doyle. Anyway, I checked up on the internet, and he was working on a machine, something he called a uh, frequency harmonizer. And he had hoped that this would open up a doorway to the afterlife. <laughs> Are you serious? Well, I'm not saying it worked. I'm just saying he built it. And Mr. Templeton was supposed to have worked with Edison. Exactly. I mean, this could be Edison's original machine. And even if it's not, it's old enough. But, darling, how would he have gotten it? I don't know, maybe he just took it. But George said that the old man was working very hard to reach his wife. He must have had a method. And it might have been this machine. Yeah, George says, Helen says, the Internet says, it's all hearsay. I think I hear something. A ghost. Yes. Got you, Mom. You're a comedian. All right. Nice car. Say what, about, uh, 67? Oh, no, 66. Hey, even nicer. I'm Graham Schofield. Oh, George hey. Gifford said you'd, uh, had a problem? Well, no, not really. Well, to tell you the truth, it, uh, didn't sound too serious, but, uh... Well, I thought I'd take the opportunity to drop by. Say hello. Thanks. Good to see this place occupied. House standing empty can, uh, attract squatters and the like. Well, I haven't seen any sign of, of that. I kept an eye on the place. The Templeton family always had a lot of respect in this town. Dinner's ready. Oh, didn't know we had company. <laughs> Officer, this is my wife, Sheila. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Robinson. Nice to meet you. And my daughter, Megan. Megan, you're a pretty girl. Excuse us, I think she's hungry. She's shot. She's autistic. Sorry. We love her very, very much. Of course. Well, nice to meet you, Richard. Thanks. See you again. Jesse. Sleep. At the switch.
Did you get a look at him? No, I don't know who he was. He, he was just banging on the door with my shovel and left gouges in it. Was he trying to get in? Why didn't he smash a window? Is she gone? Was she a ghost? Definitely not. You left it on. It's been on through all of this. You think we might have had a visit from old Mrs. Templeton? Of course not. I don't know what to think. And that painting. I don't know what to think about that. I know. It's like someone guided her hands. I mean, how else? So you do believe that something else is going on here? Don't you? Yeah. So what should we do? Just leave? Just take her away from here? We don't know that that machine does anything. It's like we're using her as bait. We're not going to let anything happen to her, Sheila. She hasn't spoken for 12 years. She hasn't uttered an intelligible sound. There's something in there that's reaching her in a way that we never could. Now, Dr. Holling said, don't expect a miracle, but we've had a miracle. We can't let it go. Megan, honey, we know that something happened last night. 
And Daddy and I want you to know that we are always with you. There's nothing to be afraid of. Okay? We just want to find out who was it who made you sing. Because we've never heard you sing before. And you have such a pretty voice. And Mommy wants to hear you sing again. Maybe you should think about getting yourself a lock for this door. I will. I still don't understand what he was trying to do. Now, is that the same person who made those burns in the grass? Is he trying to scare us? If he is, he's certainly doing a good job. Well, maybe uh, your idea about squatters. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Maybe there was someone living here, and they just don't like being evicted. But the doors and the windows were all locked, and everything was spotless. Well, it's a big house. Someone might have come in through the basement or... I reckon I know most of the transients in town. I'll, uh, I'll see what they've been up to. But what about the ghosts? The <laughs> ghosts? Well, he's got some crazy idea that the house may be haunted. Uh, I guess he heard the stories, right? Yeah. Mrs. Templeton? Well, that's way before my time, but uh, apparently the old man swore he brought her back from beyond. <laughs> that's some kind of machine or something? I don't know. I guess wilder every time you hear it. Dad! Jesse, come inside. Oh, Mom. Inside. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess I shouldn't have said anything. Probably got him all excited now. No more than he usually is. Okay. Well, I'll be in touch, yeah? Thanks. Dad, he was talking about the machine. That's what it's for. Bringing ghosts back. Jesse. But why didn't you tell him that? We don't really know what it's for. I don't want you running around telling people we saw ghosts. They might think we are crazy. We did see something, Mom. It was with Megan. And we're not crazy. Good night, sweetie. You sure you want the first shift? Yes. You staying with Megan, Mom? That's right. Can I stay? Not a chance. Let's just leave the ladies. Jesse, go back to your room. Jesse, did you hear me? Get back in your bed. Jesse. What, Dad? Sheila? Sheila? Dad, what's wrong? What is it? There was something in the bed. doing 
Let's not start second guessing now. We both knew. We don't know anything, Victor. So we just proved. How many voices did you hear besides Megan? What? How many voices? There were two, right? I suppose. And two children. Singing. Singing along with her. What are you trying Two to... Two children. Jesse's snow angels. Do you think what we are experiencing... are dead children? Maybe. Doing what, exactly? Trying to reach us. Trying to communicate with us through Megan. Huh. Communicate, is that what you call it? What else could it be? I have no idea. But whatever it is, it is putting my daughter at risk, and I won't allow that to happen. I want that machine out of here, Victor. Promise. What's up? I'm building a fort. Cool. Gotta protect ourselves, Dad. Can I help you? No. I wanna do it myself. All right. Shall we go into the canyon and watch the animals? Hmm? There are lots of birds and animals. Maybe we'll see some, okay? Honey, what is it? You don't want to go there? There's something down there that scares you. Huh? What's wrong? She's afraid. Megan? I can't believe it! You turned that machine on! I don't know what you're talking about. I never touched it. It's on. Megan? the back issues you wanted, Mr. Robinson. Thanks. Anything else you need, just let me know. Okay. Hey, Victor. What's this? Boning off on your local history? No, I'm... I'm just... Oh, I had a word with a few of the street people. 
Nobody knows about anyone camping out in your house. Or if they do, well, they're not telling me about it. I'll keep digging, though. Take it easy. Sheriff. Come on, Graham, please. Graham, I probably should have asked you in the first place. I'm actually looking for some information on something that may have happened a few years ago. The death of two children. Um, murder, possibly. Now, wh why would you be looking up something like that? Well, I'm kind of embarrassed to talk about it, but there's been some strange incidents going on at the house, and it is affecting the kids. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if... Sounds like you're ghosts again. Yeah. The only person who ever died in that house was Mrs... Mrs. Templeton. I know. I'm not saying this happened in the house. Or that it happened at all. But mm -hmm. there are some very curious things going on. Well, I guess that was the biggest case this town has ever had. Biggest thing since I got here, anyway. Chloe Markle and Joshua Norris. Guy Manias jumped them on their way back from school. They never found the bodies. How did they know then? Oh, there was plenty of circumstantial evidence. And there was his confession, which is a little bit shaky, I'll admit. Why? Jack Manias was a drifter. He spent his whole life in and out of institutions. He picked up the habit of confessing to things that he didn't do. Why was he taken seriously? Well, because like I say, this time there was evidence against him. Did you think he was guilty? I... I was just a deputy. I... It really wasn't my case. I will say this. It could have been handled better. It was an election year, and... People figured maybe there was kind of a rush to judgment. You know? Fact is, though, Jack Manias went to prison eight years ago, and since then... Not a thing. Maybe that's just a coincidence. Are their families still in town? The victims? <laughs> well, you're taking this pretty seriously for a guy who's just curious. I have two kids. My house was attacked. Wouldn't you take it serious? Chloe used to love to help me in this garden when she was small. We'd spend hours here talking about the future, what she was going to do when she grew up. She was uh, exceptionally bright. She could have done anything. I'm sorry. You never get over it, you know? You carry on, you have to, but, uh, you never get over it. That must have been very painful for the family, the trial. It was, especially because I'm sure they got the wrong man. What makes you say that? Manias was pathetic. I mean, he would have confessed to anything they put in front of him. He knew nothing about Joshua and Chloe. He didn't even know what Joshua was wearing that day. And he had no idea where the bodies were. He forgot. The whole thing was a farce. I'm sorry. You talk about painful. The most painful fact of all is knowing that the real killer is out there. He murdered Chloe. Got away with it. Mr. Markle thinks that Manias was railroaded. Victor whole jury thought he was guilty. But they could never find the bodies. Meaning? In Megan's picture, there were two figures inside of a circle. And that could be a grave. Maybe that's what they were trying to tell us. That that's where they were. But the man figure was in the drawing, too. 
Maybe it's a present. Mr. Robinson, I think your lawyer told you about me. <clears throat> I wanted to ask you some questions about those two children. Joshua Norris and Chloe Marker. You're a writer, huh? Yes, that's right in the book. No, I don't think so. A lot of people after my story. You ain't the only one, but I can imagine. Did you know those children, either of them? You don't have to know people to kill them. And how did you pick them up? Off the street. You just pulled them into your truck? No one saw you? Just takes a second. I would imagine that might be difficult. <laughs> Two children that age. Not if you know what you're doing. <laughs> Where'd you bury them? By my place. But you lived in a truck? Yeah. Well, wherever it was, I don't remember. That seems odd. I mean, that anyone wouldn't remember where they buried two bodies. Well, I got a trail of bodies behind me, but I can't remember where I put every one of them. You were in that town a couple of weeks before you did it. Did you have a job? Sure. I do landscaping. With whom? Parks department. Uh, nut house. Where? A uh, big place. The psycho place. Bellwood. Bellwood, yeah. Hmm. And did you work anywhere else, like the South Hills or the Canyon? Yeah, I did work there. A fellow named Gifford. George Gifford? Mm, stingy bastard. Wouldn't never let me inside. Even if I was dying of thirst, he'd make me use the water hose. <laughs> he was scared of me. Most guys are, even in here. I murdered 30 people. They're making a movie. Now you're writing a book. They all know about me. They all know Jack Manias. Jesse, we are late. Jesse, Mom, I've got to finish the fort. Later. We have to pick up Megan from school. Mom, let's go. Hiya, folks. Hi, Hi. George. I'm sorry, we're on our way. Yeah, it's OK. Just, uh, just passing through. Uh, would you look at that? Who's the architect? Hmm? Me. <laughs> Only Mom won't let me play in it. We have to pick up a sister. Why do I have to go? Because I can't leave you here, Jesse. That's why. Look, now, look, I, I don't want to butt in on you folks, but if it's uh, just a question of looking after the boy, I'd be glad to. Mom? I couldn't ask you to. It's no problem. Besides, I know a thing or two about forts. Mom, please? It's no problem. Don't worry. Like I said, I'll look after him. Glad to do it. <laughs> OK. Be back as soon as I can. Yes. Well, now, Jess, what do you want to play? Hi. I was 
Ismanias. There's no way he could have killed those two children. How can you possibly know that? Where's Jesse? Isn't he here? I left him with George. George. Why? What's wrong? What? Manaya said that he knew George. And then he'd worked with him. It may not mean anything, but... Maybe they're just over at his house. Let me call him. Jesse! Yeah. Jesse! No answer. Maybe they just went exploring. Maybe. Come on, sweetie. It's all right. Mommy's with you. Come, we're just going for a little walk. Come on! Jesse! Victor, slow down. Oh, why did you leave him with that man? He's our neighbor, remember? What exactly did that lunatic say? Manias is from another planet, but the fact that there's a killer loose and that he he knows George, I Jesse. Dad. Hey, we heard you calling. <laughs> Something wrong? No, no, just wondering where you were. We went all the way down to the bottom, Mom. It was really neat. Hmm. Mr. Gifford was gonna take me down to the cave, but but we ran out of time. Uh, maybe on the weekend, eh, Jess? Hmm? With your parents' permission, of course. I think we have something planned for the weekend. Whatever. Real pretty down there, but it can be tricky. Thanks, George. Lots of twists and turns. I bet. Don't go too far without us. Yeah. Can't be too careful. Jesse at the community center. All right. You okay with Megan? Now what? When I woke up at my desk here the other night, the train was still on. Well, Jesse was probably playing with it. Oh, he was asleep. And he wouldn't leave it on. And I read the article about the missing boy. His mother, Mrs. Norris, said that her son Joshua loved trains. Victor. It is those two kids, Sheila. And I think they're trying to tell us that ours are in danger. I can't deal with this now. You are totally obsessed. I have to go get Jesse. We'll talk when I get back. You can make all kinds of shapes, like with your hand. See? Good. Or uh, with your face. Here, look. Mm -hmm. Hi, Dad. Hey. 
One more ice cream. So what are you two up to? Victor, you promised. We've got to know. We can't just wait around for something to happen. You're unbelievable. Come on, honey. Let's go. We'll play with that later. Garrett boy. Took something from your tool shed. What do you take? Uh, I don't know. He's moving too fast. What happened? Humphrey Garrett's boy, Elson, from down the road. He took the shovel. The shovel? I don't know what he'd want with that. This old man's got all the tools he needs and then some. Then he's a bit uh, slow, if you know what I mean. You say he lives just down the road? Yeah, with his father. Not exactly the friendliest folk in the neighborhood. Pretty much keep it themselves, especially Elson. Strange boy, doesn't speak. Is he dangerous? I suppose he could be. Uh, yeah, he had some problems when he was younger. You really ought to get a lock for that. Excuse me. My name is Victor Robinson. I just moved in up the street at the old Templeton house. Yeah, I know. You must be Mr. Garrett. Mr. Garrett, my pleasure. Well, you don't live here alone, do you? No, my son Elson lives here with me. That wouldn't be the young man I just saw walking in the canyon with a shovel, would it? Not there's the only shovel I got. The one in the barrel. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you, and we'll see you again.
Is this him? Yeah. That's him, definitely. Is he a patient here? Elson's an outpatient. We haven't been able to do much for him, I'm afraid. He uh, doesn't or won't speak. Won't? He had some sort of traumatic experience when he was a teenager. What kind of experience? He went missing for several days. No one knows where, but when they found him, he was like he is now. He had simply withdrawn. And we didn't know him before, so it's been difficult to evaluate him. It's been, yeah, eight years now. Eight years? Mm hmm Dr. Hollings, I've been doing a little research on the town, and about eight years ago, there was a horrible incident. Two kids? Yes, it was horrible. And it was about that same time, but there is no connection. They caught the man who did it. I mean, you said Elson wasn't trying to hurt Megan or lead her away, right? No. But I don't really know, because he ran as soon as he saw me. But Megan is fine. You know, we're the ones having a nervous breakdown. Well, maybe a little bit of good news will cheer you up. Megan is doing remarkably well. I don't know what to ascribe it to, but something is causing unusually quick progress. What do you mean? Well, we're seeing a lot of improvement in her drawing therapy, and she sometimes responds to voice. I would say that your decision to move here was a wise one. There was a box of clippings under his bed. What, you broke into his house? They were about the murder of those two kids and him missing at that time. Here, look at this. You took this? Just look at it. Looks like Megan's. Exactly. It all fits. I think Elson Garrett's the killer. So your daughter did that? In a sense, yes, she did it. And my wife is a witness. And your interpretation is that those are the two murdered children? Chloe Markle and Joshua Naras? It's not an interpretation. And this is what Elson did. Now, I know I shouldn't have gone in there. And I shouldn't have taken that. But, Graham, I'm scared to death for my kids. I don't want him to do this again. Mm -hmm. It's pretty close, all right. I don't know, Victor. It's not like I can bring Elson in for questioning. I mean, in the first place, he can't communicate. He's, he's in shock. Maybe as a result of that crime. If you can get a search warrant, and go into his house, I know you're gonna find more evidence. Graham, you said yourself that you had doubts that Manias was guilty. I went down to the prison and spoke with him. There's no way that man's the killer. Come on, Victor. Get a search warrant, I need a judge. How do I explain this to a judge? Well, come on downstairs with me, I wanna show you something. So, this is old man Templeton's magic machine, huh? Thomas Edison, actually. No way. Take a look. The man himself, I'm impressed. How's it work? I'll plug it in. All I know is every time it's on, something happens. Spirits. I've seen them, and I've heard them. Everyone has. And now uh, you've seen the results. She very soon came to an open field with a wood on either side of it. It looked much darker than the last wood, and Alice felt a little timid about going into it. However, 
On second thoughts, she made up her mind to go on. For I certainly won't go back. Megan, something wrong, sweetheart? I don't know what it is. Trust me, Graham. I'm not crazy. <laughs> no, I don't think you are. Just promise me one thing, yeah? Stay away from the Garrett house. One break and I can justify two. Well, you know. Sure. Thanks. Talk in the morning, yeah? Good night, Victor. Megan? <sighs> Honey, what is it? <gasps> I can do. I haven't practiced first aid since Girl Scouts. Mm. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Maybe I should drive you to the hospital. Oh, I'll be okay in a minute. Why did he attack you? I don't know. Maybe I was in the way. In the way? I don't think it was me he was after. Oh, my God. You folks keep a gun? No. Well, you might consider it just to be on the safe side. Well, what about Elson? He's still out there, and he's dangerous. Well, if you press charges, I can bring him in. If I'm lucky, I can keep him in jail, but for how long? I don't know. That's wonderful. You're doing great, honey. Megan, your daddy and I know that you're trying to tell us something. Something that is very important to you and to us. We know it's not just about what happened to your friends a long time ago. But it's something that is scaring you. Now. Darling. How can mommy help you? Do your friends want us to leave? Is that it? Do they want us to stay and help? Do you want something to eat? Hmm? No. What about Jesse? I'll pick him up. Now let me get him. I need a break. Not going so well? No, I can't concentrate. So I see. I can't get her drawings out of my mind. The circles. Megan's using them in our paintings now. I think she wants us to stay here. Good. I wonder if her drawings, those circles, could be caves. I mean, 
Elson's picture was a hole, but it's the same thing. Could it be that the bodies are in those caves? In the canyon. And I wonder if they've searched those caves. I'll ask Graham. Gave it to me. Oh, lucky you. You catch him yet? Not yet. Your dad home? Yeah. See ya. See ya. We have a warrant out for his arrest, but so far. You know, he's the only one. It's not the point. We don't have proof. I certainly didn't get a good look at him. But he knew where everything was the painting, the machine in the office. He must have been watching you. That means that he knows that we're on to him. That's why he frightened us, to get us to leave. Seems like it. If he'd come for your daughter, he probably could have taken her. Maybe he's not as slow as everybody thinks he is. We know he can read. We saw all those clippings he had. Maybe you're right. People think he's slow because he can't talk and because he acts kind of strange, but I don't know. I don't think even his own father knows what's really going on with him. Well, that's a surprise. Hi there. She still gets tense around strangers. Yeah, but not so long ago, she wouldn't have come that far. Despite all that's happened, maybe because of it, she's starting to open up. For the first time, I have hope. 
Well, Garrett's place backs onto the canyon, just like this one does. I'll, uh, I'll see why I can turn up. He was down at the community center showing off his bike. He left 40 minutes ago. It's only 15 minutes from here. Where is he? He may be just riding around. I'm gonna go look. Hi, George. This is Sheila. Have you seen Jesse down by your place? You haven't seen a boy on a bike, have you? Nope. You sure about that? Where's your son? You stay away from my son. I know you sent Schofield around again, stirring up trouble. Elson never harmed nobody, understand? He's the one that's been hurt. And no one's ever done a damn thing about it. Now, you get off my property, mister. Your son ain't here. Sign of Jesse? No, not yet. Uh, uh, plenty of bike trails down there, but well, he's, a, he's a pretty responsible boy. Megan, where are you going? Yeah, he's, uh, he's probably just having fun someplace. Uh, I, I don't think there's anything to worry about. Graham! Victor, I, I, I was just about to call you. What is it? I just started checking things out down here. a search party. There's no time. Elson has Jesse and he's down here somewhere. You don't know what's happening, Victor. Maybe nothing at all. You know that's not true. Where does this trail lead? Eventually to the cave. Are you coming with me? Sure as hell, I'm not gonna let you go alone.
Kill those children and bury them in one of the caves? Everything points that way. Oh, I hate to tell you this, Victor. We searched every inch of those caves. We didn't find a thing. Doesn't mean they're not there. They could have been well hidden. Megan, what are you doing? Megan? Megan, what's gone into you? She wants to go down there. I've never seen her like this. Can you stay here just in case? Half a dozen of them. It's like he couldn't remember where he buried the bodies. Or he was preparing for more. Yeah, this is mine, all right. Probably didn't want to take his father's because he'd look suspicious. Jesse. I, uh, I don't know. Well, let's go. You go on ahead. I'm gonna make a call. You get some help down here. Jesse! Jesse! Graham! Look at me. You all right? Dad! Watch out!
late, Victor. She's too late. Who's that? Oh! Who's that? Who's that? He's dead. He saved my life. They're at rest. Oh, be careful. Oh, I am. <laughs> Why did you put the box? Oh, well, back where I found it. Could be worth something. Ah, that's enough of that. She's doing great. Even without the help of her friends. She's getting better every day. This is beautiful, sweetheart. That's our house, isn't it? That's Mom. And that's me. And I can tell that's Jesse. <laughs> and that's you, isn't it? Great, Meg. <clears throat> she did that all by herself. <laughs> 